What's going on, YouTube viewers? It's fall. I have Celeste Banks with me. Get people's names wrong. <laughs> but um, I saw her. Um, it, it's a non. It's a nonprofit organization. Nonprofit ATA. Um, that stands for Activism for the Arts. Yes, and I loved her mission statement. Um, the whole program. So tell us about what's going on. With what you're putting together with ATA. Okay. It well, sounds like a dangerous organization, <laughs> ATA too. Yeah, I think I think when people hear the word activism, it's a very powerful word. It's a very yes. strong word. It can be perceived in not necessarily a positive way, but I think that activism activism is something that's necessary. And so ATA was created to teach children how to use arts as a form of activism. How can they use the art to address social issues that are affecting them and their communities? I mean, and that's just like right on the, the pulse of the matter now. When we have so much uh, mass media that controls everything, what, what we say, um, what we think, um, how we see our world, how we see each other, especially how we see each other. I laughed the other day, I was with Tobias, and we we're talking to Tobias Fox. We we're talking about food. And I went to McDonald's. I go to McDonald's to get my coffee. It's cheap. <laughs> and um, and they have these big. This is their new promotion. They have these big three three foot by three foot um, pictures of of the um, what's the breakfast sandwich with the sausages? Egg McMuffin. Egg McMuffin. Right. And I'm like, look at these people. They're just getting so desperate. They got to keep us on that food. Now I mention that because it's the it's the artists that can come and create a different vision a different picture for what we should eat or how our breakfast should look. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's like subconsciously getting into your psyche and causing you to think certain things. Yeah. yeah. So art is a, a very powerful tool because it has the ability to reach everyone. So you may be Hispanic and can't speak English, but if you go into McDonald's and wow. see that Egg McMuffin, that picture is going to make you picture. hungry. Like <laughs> right. No, you even have to come in. You, you can see it from here. If you hungry, you coming in. So that's, that's the power in art. It has the ability to reach so many people in ways that we may not be able to communicate in a normal way. Right. And we want to get the kids as young as possible. Yes, we want to start them young because in a typical art classroom, they don't really talk about social activism. They don't really address issues that are affecting the children. They're more concerned with how do you make something, you know, the art for the sake of making art. But ATA, we go a little bit further than that. So we'll get into issues that are plaguing kids. Maybe bullying is an issue, gun violence, police brutality, homelessness. There's a lot of things that are affecting our children now and they can address it through art. They can talk about it through art. They can make a change. That's so powerful. And um, I think, um, well, well, let's talk about how did, how did you start? Like in terms of your artistic talents, like when did you know you were an artist? When did you know you were a teacher? Well, I didn't always, I didn't always want to be a teacher. To be quite honest, that's not something that I ever saw myself doing. Um, but I've always been an artist. I've been an artist ever since I was a little girl. I used to always paint and draw. My mom is a musician. And I have a sister that's an artist, so I always grew up around that okay, environment. But um. For as I, long as you remember, is it like as that? As long as I can remember. My mom's an organist. I always remember her playing, painting. My mom's a seamstress. So I was blessed to be in a household that promoted being creative. And then when I got into college, that's when it started to blossom. People I knew would say, you need to be a teacher. You should be a teacher. And I was like, no, I don't think I should be a teacher. And it wasn't until after um, I worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for a little while. I worked at an art gallery in South Orange. And I said, you know what? I should try to get into education. And that's how Did it, did it hit art. you like a, a bolt of light? It was day, everyone was... hitting me. It was like everyone hitting me from all different angles. My friends, my mentors. So people saw the teacher in you before you really saw embraced it. it. Pretty much. That's beautiful. But I like what you say, which, and you underscore what we're talking about, is that when you were coming up, you saw all these acts of art around you. 
you know, just undergirding you. I mean, like you were just chewing on it and hearing it and you saw it again and you, you see what I'm saying? So and look, it's so beautiful that you grow up and now you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it in a broader sense, not right. only just in, in that home, you're reaching out your tentacles outside of the right. home. Because I see the importance of it. And even as a child growing up in public school, art was always put on the back burner. You know, it was never something that people really focused on. But I had some wonderful, wonderful art teachers. And they used to go and sneak me out of class. They would go to my regular teacher and wow. say, hey, can we use Celeste for this? We need to use her for that. And basically, they groomed me into what I am today. But... I think that children should have more opportunities to have art on a consistent basis. They don't really have that. Our public school system today doesn't really care about the arts. And, and I like what you say about the love, like this love that these teachers had where they went outside of the curriculum. Because again, they saw, um, and that's what we're doing, that's what you're doing. You already see, you're looking into these children and you know that these children need more. We can't just be satisfied to just let these children go through these regular curriculums. We have to um, dedicate. Um, we have to bring other people to expose you, to, to let you hear, to right. let you feel, to let you embrace the art so you can recreate the world, right. change the world. And, you know, there's a, there's a huge push for they want these children to be critical thinkers. That's a big push in the, the curriculum right now. Because they say our children are underperforming in terms of children in other countries. But the arts really forces you to be a critical yes, thinker. Yes. So if you eliminate yes. it, you take it away, you're taking away an opportunity for them to use those skills. So it's important for many reasons. Arts is important for a ton of reasons. But as far as ATA is concerned, we really want to focus on getting them not to just learn the art, like how to paint. How to, how to play a trumpet, but we want them to think about what type of message they can send through the art. So that's, say that again. That's, that's so powerful because, <laughs> you know, for me, I'm like, sometimes I sit and I listen to the artists, like I listen to you, and it's like, it's like music to my ears because we don't hear that. You can't, where do you find that? I mean, you might hear it there, hear it there, but, you know, when we hear it in the narrative, we hear it in your story, I like to for for you to say it again and let people understand that this is what you do and that we need other artists to come right. aboard and, and assist you. Yes. Well ATA we need artists. That's how ATA will function and grow is we need local artists that are willing to come out and dedicate some of their time to these children and teach them based on their experiences. That's what really makes the art meaningful and that's what motivates these children to, to make more art. They can't do it if no one's sharing their story with them. If they can identify with one of these artists, yes. it might motivate them yes. to, to go further. So that's why it's so important that we use artists that are from here, that know the children, that know the culture. Because it's making a connection that otherwise really wouldn't be made. And speak to those people, me being one until recently, until I got my boldness. But speak to all those artists that, oh, I can't do it, I don't wanna do it, I don't have nothing this year. And I, Listen, your, your, your personal testimonies yes. is really what motivates people to change. I don't know if some of you artists realize the power that you have. The power. It's a lot of power, and I think that if you take that and you share it with someone, keeping it to yourself is not gonna benefit anyone. But if you share it, you actually help other people and that's a wonderful thing i heard ron ron, ron hotel i think i'm saying his name 13 um, 13 signs of astrology he was talking about courage he said you have to have the courage the passion to do what you believe in whether you have fear or not you know and when you were just saying that i saw you should have a ata um what superman has <laughs> and when the artists come in you, you wrap it around them and because they're a superhero yeah. We're fighting. You We're are. not fighting crime. We're fight, we fighting everything. And you're fighting it through art. Yes. Which ATA. is wonderful because some of these children, some of the most phenomenal artists are introverts. They don't normally talk. Oh, they're not. The artist is know, the weirdest. Oh, right. Me? They're not. They may not be expressive, oh but by them learning 
certain skills, they can go out and they can express it and they can get their thoughts out there and people can see what it is that they're talking about. So that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. Weird. I mean, you if you're an artist, don't try to figure yourself out. You know, just, it's like be, get connected with all other artists and you find, and that's the other thing. When you talk to other artists, you're like, oh, I think like that too. I thought I was strange. Oh, I'm okay. Right. You know? And what, and I mean, for impressionable children, that's a big deal. Because a lot of times, art children that are artists, they usually don't feel like they fit in. Yes. You know? That's right. That's they don't a, feel like they have someone they can identify with. But if they talk to an artist and someone says to him, hey, this is, I was exactly like that. I did the same thing you're doing. Just keep pushing, keep making the art, keep putting the artwork out. You know, you can promote a positive change. It will encourage them to step outside of the box and continue doing what they're doing. A lot of, a lot of artists are told not to be an artist. You know, a lot of them say, oh, that's just play. You can't do anything okay. serious with art. Okay, you get ready going. So I'm going to cut this segment off and we're going to start off on that on part two because you're getting ready to get loose. That's